From 1619 to 1808, 9 million Africans were transported to America and forced into slavery. In South Carolina, there was a law created in 1935 that defined rules uh, that slavers had to follow regarding their slaves. And this included laws that um, the slaves had to follow about their clothes. They had their own sumptuary laws. Um, so it included standards like giving them certain textiles, book colors and patterns that they were allowed to wear and how much it was supposed to cost. Uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't supposed to exceed 10 shillings. These clothes were incredibly inadequate um, and there were many cases of people dying due to exposure to the elements thanks to their flimsy clothing. Women were made to wear a one-piece frock or a slip of coarse cloth that was kind of the way you would expect for this era. A lot of people got new clothes twice a year to reflect the change in season, seasons. Now, some enslaved people only received clothes at Christmas. Anthropologists believe that the trauma and dehumanization of enslavement destroyed all African influence on um, the African diaspora in America. So, no fashion, no like culture from Africa whatsoever. This was not true, and the people were not entirely divorced from the culture of their ancestors. In Africa, for example, hair represented identity. It could represent status, tribe, and, and more. It had its own language. During the slave trade, people would braid rice seeds into their hair and sometimes use cornrows to map out the plantation in order to attempt escape. In Africa, women would wear head wraps to protect their hair from the sun and keep cool while also being fashionable. Head wraps had a language that could convey if they're single, married, widowed, rich, poor, etc. Head wraps were transferred over to America and continued to protect the hair and the health of the people that were wearing them. They became uniform because they were demonized and turned into a symbol of inferiority. After slavery, women continued to wear head wraps for their functionality. This is kind of funny, I just had this. Men started wearing things, sorry John, um, like do-rags to protect their hair. So they became a fashion statement and remained a representation of identity. Not many clothes were allowed to be transferred, so when taken, um, the clothes that they wore on their torsos, their actual clothing, was uh, taken from them entirely. Um, they were stripped and usually all they were allowed to keep was the jewelry that were adorning them. A lot of people were transferred with only beads. They were on European style clothing once they arrived to these states and he found their clothing to be constricting, confusing, very different than what they were used to. These clothes were coarse and made without the wearer in mind. People personalized the plain clothing by saving up money to buy bits of colorful fabric to add a pop or by dyeing the fabrics indigo to represent the color from their homeland. Jewelry is an important aspect of fashion to the African diaspora. People wore jewelry made of shells and glass beads in Africa. During special occasions, they would wear earrings, necklaces, chains, and bracelets. Jewelry was also historically worn for special occasions in places like Ghana and Nigeria. After slavery was abolished, African Americans would develop their own style in the Harlem Renaissance. Harlem women would have higher hemlines, lining just below the knees. Fabrics were smooth at the waist for dancing, and there were a lot of decorative patterns. Like their African ancestors, they loved to wear bright, bold colors. Men's suits can even be colorful and bold to make statements. Sometimes they would use things like alligator skins and embossed leather. Men would wear colorful v-neck sweaters as casual wear. And in the 40s, women were, would wear floral dresses and men would wear nice suits to go dancing. Things would later evolve to involve more African pride as things became more accessible. Things like kente cloth became popular. Um, statements of African diaspora pride.